I didn't like the title for this movie until I found out that it was a book, so I guess it works. Roll that intro. Welcome back to another review video. Thank you for checking out this one. This is the review for The Dirt, The Motley Cruise, The Incredible... <laughs> What is it called? What is it? The incredible story of the most notorious band in the world. Now, admittedly, growing up, I wasn't the biggest Motley Crue fan. I liked other bands a lot more. Um, no real reason. But a couple years ago, uh, one of my friends brought me to a concert one of their on their farewell tour in Manchester, New Hampshire, and I had a blast. And I really, really enjoyed that. And and it's kind of like since then, anytime you go to like a concert for anybody, you become more of a fan of that band. I mean, that's just or you know hip-hop artist or whoever it is you go see them live and you gain a new appreciation or the rare chances that they're terrible live uh then you kind of lose it for them but regardless i became a fan so when i heard that this document and mockumentary biopic whatever you want to call it was coming to netflix i was pumped because again my admiration for the band grew and the fact that it's free and on netflix that i can watch whenever i wanted to uh, i mean that's always great so enjoy the review for the dirt In the copycat world of Hollywood, it's now the trend with all these band-centric biopics. From the wildly successful Bohemian Rhapsody to the upcoming Rocket Man, studios can't wait to get their grubby hands on the rights to these stories. Tossing their hat into the ring is Netflix, with the rise and limited fall of the most notorious band in the world, Motley Crue. My first observation to this movie was how much I didn't like the acting, specifically Collison Machine Gun Kelly Baker. Side note, I do like his music. This isn't like a jumping on the bandwagon hate for him ever since his feud with uh, Eminem, because like I said, I actually do enjoy his music, and I thought that his diss track was just a little bit catchier and a little bit better. I digress. I didn't care for his portrayal of the drummer Tommy Lee. His acting just never felt on par with the other members of the group. I mean, it's obviously to be expected, being new to acting and all. And it's kind of weird that he keeps popping up in so many Netflix original films, i.e. his role in the way more popular than good movie Bird Box. The only other complaints I had about this movie really come from the quality. It almost feels like a TV network adaptation. I can't tell if that's strictly a Netflix thing. I have watched other films on the streaming service that didn't feel the same way. But this one seems like it suffers a little bit in this new age where movies are available to everyone with a subscription from day one. The antics that take place are funny and wild as to be expected. Enough that it has me really wanting to go back and read the book, which was written about the band itself. Seeing as this is a biopic, I was curious to see how accurate the film was but I also didn't want that to affect on how I scored it. It's not fair to add points for being correct, just like it's not fair to take points away from not being correct. I would criticize the origin, band assembles, gain success, fights, breaks up, only to get back together and live happily ever after in this cheesiness, but that's pretty much exactly what happened. You can't throw any crazy twists in there without pissing people off and not seeming real to the actual story. Personally, I would have liked to see more of the crazy antics and stories that you hear about, but that's just neither here nor there entertaining and free if you have netflix which it's 2019 you should have a netflix subscription or at least someone else's password to log in come on i'm giving this wild ride a 7.4 out of 10. so that is the quick review the movie came out about two weeks ago so i hope you guys got to see it i'm sure i saw a lot of people on the internet that were you know talking about it watching watching it their album sales have actually gone up since the since the movie on netflix came out so it's not a bad thing i just think that this movie's kind of mediocre i wanted to like it more than i did um it was definitely enjoyable but just didn't really hit that like oh man i could watch this over again if you are a fan of the band i'm sure you like this adaptation me coming in not really that much of a you know not knowing a ton about this band just watching it as an actual like for the movie aspect of it um, it was all right. I think this movie kind of feels like how the band resonates with me. And I think with a lot of people, um, the band feels like it should be more, have more notoriety than it does. And I say that because like, <laughs> and this sounds weird, don't get me wrong. Um, like some, a lot of bands where like the band members, the band breaks up or someone dies, <laughs> they become like infamous because of like, everyone's like, Oh, what would have happened? Um, just like if, you know, Nikki Six actually did die from that spoiler alert, but it's not really a spoiler because you should know that they're still alive. They're actually touring now, I think. But it is weird that, like, you know, the Beatles broke up and then John Lennon died. Um, there's been numerous bands in the past. I mean, even you know, acts like 
Biggie Smalls and Tupac. They died and now they're revered as like the greatest lyricists of all time. You never get to see what happened if they had, you know, completed out their careers and what they would have became and adapted with the times. Where Motley Crue, they did get back together. It was longer than it wasn't portrayed in the movie, but they got back together and they're still there and all the original members are still alive. So it's like you saw what happened. They did go through a mediocre phase. You know, they do have this somewhat infamous legacy, but it's not as much as if they had stopped because due to casualty, you know, due to decease, that was a weird word, due to someone dying or something like that. So while I wouldn't wish death on anybody, I feel like for the band's sake, it almost would have been better if they didn't get back together or if one of them did kind of overdose, which sounds terrible, I know, but it's just, that's how I feel about it. It's a weird kind of breakdown, I feel, of the band. And it may not be right, it might be wrong, you might disagree, you might agree. It's all, you know, this is all opinion based. This is all what I think of this film and whatever I think because it's my channel. Hit that like, subscribe on YouTube, like the page, comment down below what you thought if I think I'm bonkers, whatever, because all of that stuff helps out, spreads it around. I get a little bar that shows how many people, you know, it reached. And whenever people like it, that bar just spikes up and I love it. That helps everything that I do here when I'm sitting in this room talking to myself. I love you guys. I'll talk to you next week. Peace.